And our second main topic today gets submitted to us by David Carrier. Let's see. Carrero, who I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, David, uh, who writes both Bob Iger and Bob Chapek have both recently announced that Alan Horn will be retiring at the end of this year from the Walt Disney Company. We have known for quite some time that Mr. Horn would be looking to retire sooner rather than later, and it looks like the time has arrived. What immediate impact do you think this will have on the Walt Disney Studios, and what do you feel is Alan Horn's overall legacy in the film industry? Thank you so much for your time, and keep up the amazing work. All right, David, thanks a lot for sending that in, man. And yeah, listen, it is... Obviously, everybody's attention has been focused on, understandably so, the departure of Big Papa Iger. Bob Iger is leaving. Uh, I think he leaves at the end of the year. Uh, so I thought he left a long time ago. No, 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 no. He's still the chairman of the board. It's just that he handed off the CEO title to Bob Chapek, who has, in my opinion, not been doing a very stellar job so far. But, you know, Bob Iger has remained there during a transition period, and now he's going to be out. But what we haven't been talking enough about is the impending leaving of Alan Horn. And now it's been made official. Alan Horn is leaving. Now, for those of you who may not know, Alan Horn, while Bob Iger is the head of all Disney, right? He has been for, the, for, for many years, the head of all Disney. That includes the parks, licensing, cruises, like movies, everything. He, he's the head. But he turned back at the beginning of the decade when he needed somebody to be the general to run all of the movie division, that included everything movies that has to do with Disney. When he needed a general, he looked over and he saw Alan Horn had just recently retired from Warner Brothers. By the way, one of the dumbest decisions Warner Brothers has ever made in their existence. They decided that Alan Horn was too old and a little too out of touch way back in the beginning of the decade, and they started to push him out to replace him with a guy that didn't even last two years. So they pushed out Alan Horn, and Bob Iger was like, Alan Horn is a free agent? Alan Horn? I mean, he was getting ready for his retirement, going to go on to the beaches of Cabo San Luca and sip my ties and ride surfboard, practice his katas. He's a black, Alan Horn's a black belt in karate. He was on the cover of Black Belt Magazine, as a matter of fact. He was going to do all that kind of stuff on the beach. Alan Horn, or Bob Iger, rubbed his eyes and said, wait a minute, this is too good to be true. This is too good to be true. Alan Horn's available. Alan Horn's a free agent. He got on the phone, called up Alan Horn, and said, Alan, don't get too comfortable on that beach, my friend. Don't wax up that surfboard too much. Put down that fourth Mai Tai, my friend. I need you at Disney. And I need you to be our general. I need you to run all of our movie division. I need. We got so many different studios under Disney, and we're only adding more. And we need a guy who can be the shepherd of all of it, who can be the creative visionary for all of our movies, who can guide us and steer Disney Pictures and all of our other studios into the upcoming decade. I know you're looking forward to retirement, but I need you here, buddy. So Alan Horn, Alan Horn answered the call. He said, I hear you, Big Papa Iger. I'll come, I'll run Disney, and I'll take you to the promised land. Biggest regret of Warner Brothers executive level in their history, letting Alan Horn go. And what did Alan Horn do? He came over to Disney and ushered in arguably the most successful run in the history of Hollywood of any movie exec. That's all he did. That's all he did. Let's take a look at this from Variety. During Horn's nine years at Disney, the studio set numerous records at the box office, surpassing $7 billion globally in 2016 and 2018 and $11 billion in 2019 the only studio ever to have reached these thresholds uh, during his tenure, Disney released, get this, during his tenure, Disney released 20 to zero films that surpassed the billion dollar mark, including the biggest domestic release of all time with Star Wars The Force Awakens and the second biggest global release of all time in Avengers Endgame. 
The article goes on to say, prior to joining Disney, Horn held key leadership roles at prominent studios since starting his career in entertainment in 1973 at NBC's, commu- that's when I was born, um, at NBC Communications. In 1987, he co-founded Castle Rock Entertainment, which he led as chairman until 1999 when he joined Warner Brothers, where he served as president and chief operating officer until 2011. In these roles, he was involved with Batman Begins, the Harry Potter series, as well as the departed million dollar baby Shawshank Redemption when Harry met Sally Seinfeld, and the list goes on and on and on and on. He came over to Disney. He took the reins of that entire movie division. He was the boss of Kevin Feige, of Kathleen Kennedy, of John Lasseter until he wasn't there, now Peter Doctor, and all the heads of all the different studios. He was their boss. He was their leader. He was the one who gave them inspiration. When you go back and look at old articles of Kevin Feige talking about working with Alan Horn, it's it's a lot more glowing than when he's talking about Bob Chapek and say, yeah, Bob Chapek's a nice guy. He's a real guy. No, no, no. Go back and read how Kevin Feige talks about Alan Horn. Alan Bergman, who's going to be, who is succeeding Alan Horn there, talks about that Alan Horn is the most important mentor he's ever had in his career. Now, back in 2019, Alan Horn began his transition out. So he became co-chairman with Alan Bergman. Basically, he had been mentoring Alan Bergman to be the one to take the reins. I thought for a long time they were going to groom Kevin Feige to do that. But all along, Alan Horn was grooming Alan Bergman to be in that role. So in 2019, Alan Horn began his transition by becoming co-chairman and now announcing that he's, of course, stepping away. It is understandable that when we talk about Disney... And we talk about all the successes that they have had with Star Wars and Marvel and Pixar and Disney animation and everything else that they do. It's understandable that we first and foremost think of Big Papa Iger. We think of Bob Iger, right? He is the head of Disney. It's, of course, understandable that we think of in one era names like John Lasseter or now Peter Doctor or or that we think of names like Kevin Feige, of course. And the one guy who has been at the center of all of it, very quietly standing in everybody else's shadow, not seeking the spotlight, not looking to be the guy that all the cameras take the pictures of, not looking to be the one who has his name in the headlines. The guy who has very quietly been at the center of all of it has been Alan Horn. Now, I, of course, was very, very critical. The one thing I was always very critical of Alan Horn was his knee-jerk reaction to how he handled the James Gunn situation when that went down a couple of years ago. But being the seasoned vet that he is, him and James Gunn remained in communication the whole time. They mended that relationship, and James Gunn is now coming back to do Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which we will be talking about here in a few minutes. But if you're a movie fan, if you're a fan of these almost uncountable number of incredible films that have come out of Disney, and some bad ones, you you have to be aware of what an event it is to know that Alan Horn is now stepping away. Alan Horn's in his mid-70s. I mean, he began, get this, get this. For anybody who thinks it's too late to go to school or anybody who thinks it's too late to say, Alan Horn started at Disney in his mid-60s. Alan Horn was in his mid-60s. When he started at Disney, if you had told Alan Horn in his mid 60s, as he was kind of shuffling out of Warner Brothers, thinking that his career was now done. He had run the good race. He had fought the good fight. He had accomplished a lot in his career. But if you had told Alan Horn that the in his mid 60s, as he was packing up his desk, putting all of his little Funko Pops and whatever in the box to carry out of Warner Brothers, if you had told them, oh, by the way, Alan, who's, you know, turning 64, 65 at that time, you were only about to embark on the biggest, most significant successes of your career that's going to immortalize you in this business. He probably would have said you were crazy. In his mid-60s, he went over to Disney and did the work that would ultimately be the work that will define him and his career. 
he guided and mentored and shepherded and facilitated the incredible financial successes of Star Wars. And, you know, certain movies had quality successes or not. That's up for debate. But the, the, that of the incredible explosion of, of Pixar, Pixar was already an entity before that. But man, he ramped it up. And of course, then working closely, Kevin Feige finally had that ally. Kevin Feige had that guy that Kevin Feige had had to work for so long with Ike Perlmutter and he hated it. He hated his job. He hated who he had to work with. Alan Horn came in, became that guy that Kevin Feige could work with, that could mentor him, that could steer him, that could give him leadership and inspiration and equip him to do all the incredible things that Kevin Feige has done. And for that, we have Alan Horn, Alan Horn to thank. So Alan Horn leaving, um, Disney is significant. And it again marks kind of the overall transition. We are moving out of the big Papa Iger era at Disney. We're moving into the Bob Chapek era. Bob Chapek has already, uh, before now, he had already replaced a lot of Alan Horn's authority with some of his banker friends making the decisions now. So, it's uh, it's a sad time. What will the immediate impact be? The person in the uh, email asked. I don't think we're going to feel any immediate impact. You know, I don't think like tomorrow, all of a sudden, everything's going to be on fire. No, usually on these big, higher level regime changes, it takes years to feel the actual impact. So I don't think there's going to be any impact, but. Wherever Disney goes from here, whatever happens moving forward, whether it be decline or more success or whatever, uh, you're always going to have to look back at the tenure and the service and the era of Alan Horn. We're all going to be tempted to just talk about Bob Iger in this era. We're all going to be tempted just to talk about Kevin Feige in this era. But we've got to mention that of Alan Horn. He's kind of the Alexander Hamilton in the story of Disney. Is that is that a good analogy? I think I just gave a great analogy, ladies and gentlemen. I think I just gave a fantastic analogy. Alan Horn is the Alexander Hamilton of the story of Disney. Bob Iger is the George Washington. Sure. Bob Iger's Bob Iger is the George Washington. Sure. But Alan Horn is the Alexander ha Hamilton of this. And uh, his importance to this era of Disney cannot be overlooked. And so uh, as a film fan, and I hope I speak on, on behalf of a lot of us as film fans, um, we want to say to Alan Horn, Dude, thank you for the continued decades you gave to bringing entertainment to us. Thank you for setting a model that even in your mid-60s, you knew your best work was just about to start. Thank you for your role in delivering some of the most memorable, fun, entertaining, and enjoyable, and, and bonding experiences that you've put up on the screen for us as fans. And Alan Horn, we all hope you have a wonderful retirement, dude. You have more than earned it. This is your second time trying to hit that beach, dude. And all of us in the fan community, we just want to say to you, thank you. If we were a WWE auditorium right now, we'd be chanting, thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. That's what we should be doing as film fans right now. So thank you very much, Alan. And uh, we hope all the best for you. And uh, man, I hope Disney doesn't burn to the ground after you and Big Popeye or leave. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this new development? This is not surprising. Alan Horn is stepping down and retiring, going into retirement again. We wish him all the best. Whatever you guys are thinking about this, jump on down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.